Let us start our today's session. Today's session number 225. Um, 225 means uh, we are about four and a half years into this weekly session. Today is uh, 2nd of November 2024. And our topic of discussion today will be the soul's plan and karmic account based on the questions uh, posted in the group uh, by Sraddhanjali. So, Sraddhanjali, you are there? Yes, Guruji. Okay. All right. So, you are ready with your questions? Yes, Guruji. Okay, great. Fine. So, please go ahead with your first question. Then we'll go one by one. Firstly, thank you, Guruji, for taking this entire session on this questions. So my first question is, um, suppose I was harmed by someone in some lifetime. To settle that karma, I also have to somehow harm the person in a similar way, even if un unintentionally, uh, which will also bind some karma. So doesn't it become a vicious <laughs> cycle of you know, where to settle a karma, we also bind a karma. Yeah, that, that is a good question. See, uh, first question is if uh, somebody has harmed you, you need to harm that other person. Uh, that uh, uh, That is, to the other person point of view, it will happen. Whether you do it or not, it will happen because that karmic account need to settle to that person. So far as yours is concerned, most of the cases, what happens is this kind of thing happens through us, maybe accidentally. I mean, somebody, may, you, you don't have any intention to do it, but something had happened to settle other person's karma. You know, it will happen through you. That is one way. Another way is that if you are fully aware that, uh, you know, you don't want to do anything, any harm, you are operating a certain level that you don't really asking for it, but other person need to settle that karma. So from your side, as you don't want to get into involved into it, you, you can forgive from your side. Means you from your side, no further things are needed. You forgive that person. So the karmic account from your side get balanced because you are not, you know, it will not come into play into another lifetime. Hmm. So that thing, same thing can happen. You can forgive and, you know, get out of it. That is, these are the two possibilities. And uh, um, uh, that first, uh, uh, it will only, second part of your question is that it will go on and on and on. Yeah. It will go on and on and on if that other person, when it's neutralized, something has happened through you, the other person is not, you know, returned back. So that matter closed there. But if other person start anything new on the higher scale, then again, that, that kind of karmic account will not open. I mean, uh, that not settle. So then again, you do something, this, you know, back and forth will keep on going on, maybe lifetime after lifetime. And that is the case to so many, uh, so many people right now. Uh, so these things are happening. Somebody need to break the chain. And uh, so uh, from your side, you can just, you know, close that matters, forgive it and move on. You know, that is, that is one way. There is another way you can uh, do it. Now I'm saying that suppose you are aware. Now you walk some lifetime, you come about the spiritual connections, you are aware of it, that this is the karma and it is other person's karma. Really, you don't know whether it is settling or it is a new karma you are starting because that part is not known. You know, that's why it is not a good idea without knowing you to do something in retaliation. Maybe you did something and this is the time it is repay back. You got the repay. Now you need to stop, not the other person. So how do you do it? Something you, if something happens, somebody did wrong to you. You don't know whether it is a settling or a past karma, your past karma, or that person has did something new, which is binding the karma and karmic account will continue. In this case, whoever spiritually aware, what they do is they don't, you know, retaliate back, of course. Yeah. So also maybe they have done something that cannot be forgiven. Like you cannot just forgive like that, you know, and the, 
main logic here why not forgiving means that other person will take it as a common understanding and methodology they will do do it for many other people okay that is also a concern so i am talking about that scenario whether that person did it for the first time and you are you are you don't know neither you want to retaliate neither you want to forgive okay because if you forgive it is a easy way path no they replicate for others they think that this is the way of life so i am just telling in that case what how you deal with it particular spiritual aware person the way they deal with it is they pray to the divine and ask for the divine justice <clears throat> the person harmed suppose somebody has harmed me or my family you know i don't want to retaliate per se you know materialistically i don't want to file a police complaint say hmm then how do i do it should i forgive may not be because here my family is involved you know what about their you know right you know of the justice i cannot come and become a saint and forgive everything and but what about them yeah so these kind of issues you pray to the divine let the divine justice be served not i will not be involved here hmm. so the my karmic account will not be come into the picture but the divine justice will be served hmm. so divine will take care hmm. there are several cases what happened uh, that uh, you know baba ji told me leave it to me i will take care somebody harmed you you need not to do anything neither you intend to do anything nor you know you you understand that it is not forgiven no need leave it to me i will take care okay so this is the another way how you can go forward and deal with it. okay so this is this is the thing about answer your first question go ahead um my second question was um if i am harmed is that not a soul decision or an experience that my soul wanted to undertake mm -hmm. if yes then my soul had already decided to get harmed which means it also kind of bring someone to commit the crime of harming and mm -hmm. binding karma so this doesn't sounds very right yeah true yeah this is this absolutely correct see there are again two parts of it first i will talk about the soul point of view then i talk about the other person of point of view who will harm me okay soul point of view um that whatever is just does not feel right let me address that part first okay at soul level there is no right and wrong it is there is no duality okay everything from the soul's angle is a experience to get cheated also an experience to get lost something is also an experience to gain a lottery is also an experience that they are all same okay so at soul level soul wants to experience itself in infinite ways almost infinite ways it wants to experience as many versions as possible unlike our common understanding it may not be like to win and uh, you know the top or uh, you know uh, get uh, uh, like a uh, getting an award and everything even losing also part of its you know soul's experience get get beaten up also be part of soul's experience want to undergo how it feels like how it feels like to get dominated by someone it is part of the choice we make our we means our soul makes to have undergone in certain lifetime so soul point of view as there is no duality any kind of experience can can come part of it okay and that is just you want to experience out of the experience something something more powerful may come either it can give me the ability to withstand that and come out more powerful in the other side or maybe i will go and do something which will change the justice system or the way we look at it i become the ambassador into the for others to follow something may come up you know like nelson mandela what he did in the south africa yeah he undergo he was punished jailed and what not but he became a role model did he withstand the injustices he did he didn't kill another white man because he was uh, you know being tortured okay so that from that so his soul's plan was like that he used this to have some better better way of living for the as a collectively as a uh, you know as a humanity 
if something injustice has happened to me, then whoever is associated me, they can they get in touch with, you know, affected by it. And the process we learn and we grow and we become stronger. Collectively, as for example, I'm giving, say, COVID happened all over the world. All of us who has overcome that period, we come out stronger. Now we know how to deal with it if a pandemic comes and how to even not going out from home, can we work, can we earn money, can we survive? And all the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Maybe before that, we will be scared to death if it is, we were told ki you have to undergo one year of your life like that. He said, it's not possible. Impossible. It's not cannot happen like that. Hmm. Or we go to other track and say, why the God is so injustice, you know, so injustice happened to us. Yeah, both of them are, when you come out to the other side, those questions, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you already empowered with the experience. So all the experience, there is some cause. Maybe during the experience, it is unpleasant. And it's clearly understood. I normally give example of climbing a mountain. While climbing a stiff mountain, you get tired, you get sweating, and you need to be, you know, getting you know, exhausted, and maybe the legs are trembling, and it's a tiring and it's painful journey up. But when you reach to your destination, or on the top of the mountain, you know, then all the things... Is worth it. That the painful experience will not stay, but that experience reaching up the top and you know seeing the all other you know all the panoramic view from there it itself is so much rewarding that it takes care of the pain. You will forget about the pain what you took while undergoing that journey. Same thing here. So from the higher level, soul plans many things which may be uncomfortable, unpleasant, painful while you experience that. But what you come out with the other side, that is important because that's what soul wants to achieve. It is said that only the diamond out of the coal mine, which is the, the stone, which has a potential to be the diamond, that got maximum heating, cutting, you know, and grinding, polishing, and you know, temperature treatment, heat treatment, cold treatment, whatnot, any type of treatment, then the actual value comes out. Same, same way the the soul works. It will not take a mercy or say pity that no, 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 don't cut that or don't hit that or don't put it into the fire because that is a purification process. That's how the actual value comes. So that is the soul wants us to undergo that so that we can purify, come clean, stronger, better human being on the other side, which is our soul's purpose. Or in the process, we can go down that ultimately lose the opportunity in that lifetime and who is needed to come into that particular, you know, the level of uh, the awareness. And Okay, so and uh, regarding the second part, what, what was the second part of that about the other person I told I will discuss later. Second part of this question about yeah. the other other person, yeah. what was that? So if, uh, if I'm harmed in this process, if mm -hmm. my soul decides to undergo this, the mm -hmm. person who is harming me is mm -hmm. also binding karma. So right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let me answer that part. Yeah. So from soul's point of view from the other person you know there also has to do take up something to learn certain lessons it is their soul's plan okay maybe by harming they are realizing it is not a you know good thing to do or it is not a smart thing to do we have to face consequences after the consequence they will learn it they will not do it again Okay, so that is why they have chosen, that soul has chosen to work in this way. Hmm. Because remember that at the when we incarnate, we get disconnected from our soul consciousness. So actual logic is not understood. We walk in the darkness. I have given example that how we live our life. We stumble upon, we fall down and all those things. Maybe in the process, we may kill some insects that come below my feet and get killed. I, because I cannot see it, so I don't, I'm not aware of it. Okay, anyway, so that is other soul's point of view. It is not necessarily they have to go always into the what is the their best interest, because that best interest will come after the lessons learned, not before doing it. If somebody in life doesn't take any challenges, they will not learn anything. Right? 
a child, suppose it never appear in the exam, big exam is too tough or teachers are too strong, whatever be the reason. Okay. That child will never grow. We have to put him through that exercise to ex experience and even undergone many of the things through the system. Not all the systems are correct. Not all the system are justified. Not all the systems are fair. But still, we need to do it for the benefit of the child. So that they complete everything with, with all the package together. It, everything is a package. Not all the good thing. We cannot dictate every, everything into their life. So same here. Soul doesn't want to dictate things. It allows us to undergo by trial and error, by mistakes we learn. Once we run to mistakes, particularly the karmic ones, we never forget that. Soul point of view, I'm saying that experience is there. So in the next time, some inner call will come. We say, no, it's not a you know a good thing to do. We cannot get away with it. Yeah. Even though nobody is uh, you know seeing it, nobody is listening it, but still you know my karma will not you know um, uh, get me free. So that that they learn experientially in the hard way. Yeah. Right. So, next question. Which also means that the soul will not always know that there are consequences. In the process, the soul is also learning, is it? No, no. Soul knows everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Soul knows everything. Monica, I'll come back to you. Uh, soul knows everything. It is Nothing is unknown to our own soul. Okay. Okay. But they want to experience this. Yeah, it wants to experience. It wants, uh, you know, like a father is guiding the child. So it wants the child to undergo the experiences firsthand. Mm. Okay. Like I give example of, you know, Kumar Mangalam Birla is a, mm. in, uh, in the Birla hire, I mean, is a, so his parents, I mean, the, his family has a huge property, Birla Empire. But his father wants him to undergo with the public transport in Mumbai to attend the school and colleges, you know, local train, local bus and things like that. Um, so now that uh, why they did it? Because so that he is prepared when he gets the responsibility of this Birla Empire, he can understand the common person's feeling. What are the things are uh, appropriate, what are the things are practical, which is non-practical, all what common people need, they feel, because that is the ultimately has to run the business through those people. If he doesn't understand that, you know, then he may take erratic decisions when ultimately when he, the company will fall eventually. So this is also another way to make sure that you undergo the grind of life to understand. Okay. Uh, when, uh, in contrary to that's what his parents have been put him through all this, going to the like a normal being. No, you are not a bidler thing that a chauffeur driven car will be given and he will be collected and dropped back to the school. Even now, you know, you have to find a way out. You know, there was some, you know, story regarding that uh, uh, some Arab uh, sheikhs, Saudi Arabia, some sheikhs uh, son, um, very rich. And they come to hear that many countries people cannot afford, uh, they cannot eat now, malnutrition. They see some pictures from some part of Africa or many other places in Asia. So his question is why they, they are not eating. Yeah? So there is no you know, supermarket nearby because his idea of not getting food is there is no supermarket nearby. Okay. See, in the, what's this particular person cannot be a good business person because they don't understand what is the issue. Okay. So that's why the Kumar Mangalam Birla's parents wants him to experience and understand. You know, it is not about that uh, the actual issue when you are thinking it is not that. Because you are protected, you are given, so you think everything for granted. That is not the case in majority of the people. How they live their life. So that is the thing. So anyway, so I hope I answered your question. So that is that is how it is. Our soul wants the similar thing with us. Yes, Guruji. Um, Guruji, my third question is, does um, harming someone to protect oneself also binds karma? 
like for example like we also talked about it just sometime back like if we kill a mosquito small things like if we kill a mosquito or an insect because mm-hmm. we pro- want to protect ourselves from diseases or we have a phobia for that insect so will that also bind karma mm-hmm. okay the answer is yes <laughs> because it is a life form we are killing the life form yeah the answer is yes but thing let me take from our point of view um it is all about our what choices we make it applies for anything how we live you know uh, what we eat and many other things it is about available options you know you have to take options which is the least harmful least i'm not saying zero maybe there is no option possible which has no you know harm like eating also same thing if i have a choice you know five different types of food i can eat if i choose consciously out of free will which is the least harmful to anybody else anybody else any animal or plant or whatever it is that is the best choice for me most conscious choice for me so regarding this mosquito or insect and all if there is other methods available like if i do some treatment to my house so that they, they cannot enter or you do something like uh, something you put some chemical around so that by smell they get repelled hmm. or if i can you know have some kind of trap to catch them and then leave them without killing them leave them somewhere else you know for that go into the forest or far away whether they don't come back these are the choices if we do have then we are guilty of not taking up those choices less harmful choices but some places if the killing is the only way then i don't have choice okay suppose i see some snake is about to bite me i have a rod in my hand i i can hit the you know the snake with the rod because otherwise next second i will get bitten up i'll get a snake bite yeah in these cases it is it's okay because i don't have choice you got my point so it is all about our intention and how we apply our free will choices that makes the karma okay but so far as the killing is concerned killing is because we have the other options as i said that uh, the repel, repelling and other things so no they do you know if we if you can deploy them to the best even then something happens then we don't have any control then we can go for the extreme but otherwise we have to give that you know go for that kind of options okay but to in in summary to give the whether we do bind the karma or not yes only i'm talking the extent of karma if we you know don't have any other choice still have to kill that karmic thing will be much much less okay all right yeah my next question is uh, we once discussed the example of adolf hitler and mm. soul deciding to experience the horrific lifetime that he had mm. so why would the pl- soul plan to undergo such an experience so if it is like uh, to bring a change to humanity or a bigger cause does does his soul get the discount on his karmic deeds mhm Mm, because okay. he brought a positive change. Uh, sorry, say it again, little bit. Say it again, once again. Uh, yeah. So um, about Adolf Hitler that we discussed before. Mm. So why would a soul um, plan to undergo such a horrific life? No. Mm-hmm. So if it is for a betterment of the society or to bring a better change in the society, a positive mm-hmm. change will his soul get a karmic discount, kind of like mm-hmm. because he brought a positivity. Yeah, yeah no this is see uh, first of all as i mentioned soul wants to experience in multiple ways okay uh, and there is no good and bad so from that point of view even a soul can choose to be like a hitler but the repercussions and all those things had a some multiple effect if the more people are involved you know their lives are involved then all humanity gets a lesson hmm. after that uh, okay because karmic wise it is not uh, it's not also possible the number of people kill that many times to take birth on the planet earth okay then he has to undergo some other ways what has been you know earlier we discussed i think in the group anyway so that about that his soul's part there is no you know the the free meal it has to be compensated you know but on the other side if you see the post that era 
all the thing, humanity come together, the United Nations were formed, so many uh, countries came together, and then um, like a NATO and these kind of things have been formed to defend each other. And after that period, there are almost a you know period of say about 70, 75 year, years that happened when there is no major war broke out. Hmm. So in that, up to the I'm saying the all over the world, small, small here and there, yes, but no world war, I mean. Hmm. So this kind of things, so that itself is there was a purpose served. Because of that incident, so horrible and horrific. Then that makes others to team together. Otherwise, the people keep on fighting. The each and every countries, every other day, some country will be fighting with others. Slowly, slowly, we are coming back to that. But that is a different issue. But after the that era, about fifty years, we have seen peace, right? No major, uh, you know, escalation of the world war has happened. Small, small, yes, it is always there with something or other going on somewhere. So that is also humanity learned the lesson and that is not the right, you know, approach to go. So maybe his soul, he, in soul's point of view, he might have sacrificed his life because there is no other way we can deal with it. It has to go through that process. So in that case, it has been, uh, goes such a way that he can then, uh, he discounted that life. And all the repercussion, a lot of changes happen in the society. That may be the you know indirect purpose of his life. And humanity also learned the lesson that way. Okay. Okay. Um, my next question is, we also say that most of the bad things we do might not be soul's plan, but due to free will. Again, at soul level, there is no good or bad, but only experiences. Isn't it also possible that the bad things we do is part of the soul's plan then? And how do we know if it is a soul's plan or free will? Like for example, Adolf Hitler, it was his soul's plan, although it was a mm. wrong thing to do. Or doesn't it matter? Like whether it's a soul's plan or a free will, the repercussions will be the same. Mm. Okay. See, um, free will only has some effect to change the extent. I normally use three V's. Hmm. So one is the uh, the velocity, how fast it will happen. Something there is a soul's plan. Okay. Suppose um, I need to visit 10 countries. It is my soul's plan. Other than country of my residence, I will visit 10 more countries. It is my, it is, I'm giving some example. First is velocity. Like whether, I mean, how fast I can able to do that. But what part of my life I will There is a velocity. How, how fast? Then the, the variety, like whether I will be just, uh, um, uh, variety means what are the type of experience in each level I will be having through? Hmm. That, is, that is the variety and that is, uh, and the fastness, like what depth I will go. Hmm. Now, normally I go into the giving example of this case, like visiting a museum. Hmm. You need to go and visit the museum. How fast maybe, uh, you know, you have tried thinking about visiting a museum, not happening, not happening after maybe two years, finally you got a chance. But in the beginning, you know, when the opportunity comes in the first instant you go, that is the velocity, you know. Then the variety, after going there, this museum, how many places inside the museum I will visit? There may be, there are, say, maybe three-storied building and then 12 lobbies are there full of artifacts or something in that museum. You know, what extent means that uh, maybe I will visit only two of the lobbies and say, oh, I, what, I am not feeling interested. Let me go. So that, that means out of 12, my percentage-wise, that out of 12, only two. Okay, that is that is my variety. I didn't go and opted to see all full variety of the place what that is offering. I limited to some few places, but interest me or after that I lose my interest. So that is a variety, vastness. Suppose not only I go there, I visited those places, maybe all 12, and each and every artifact, there is something written there, maybe some, there is a code there. Hmm. 
a QR code, I'd see and read the history, or there is a catalog I open and see what is meant, who used it, what was the historical significance of the art artifact. That is called fastness. Means that much deep I can go. So my soul's plan has a simple one thing, you know, to visit a museum. But these things come under the free will. When I will visit, how fast I will visit or how late I will visit, that is the velocity. Hmm. And variety, after reaching there, how, what extent I will visit. And the third is each and every aspect, how deep I will go. Those all are defined by my free will. And that determines the what I choose, that determines the type of experience I will have. Okay, suppose a velocity wise, uh, suppose some museum is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I went there 5.45. That means I don't have much opportunity to see much things. Yeah, 15 minutes, I can, whatever possible, I just say, oh, okay, okay, fine, let's go. Like that. So this coming from all over from free will. So that is what it needs to be understood. Okay. The extent, the experience will completely change. Depending on what we choose out of our free will. Okay. The next question is, is there a difference between the spiritual journey to, journey to enlightenment of a soul which has taken birth with uh, non-extreme experiences um, versus the soul which has decided to experience extreme lifetime like that of Hitler? Like, mm -hmm. Will his soul have a different kind of a journey to enlightenment than maybe a normal person like not, us? Yeah, no, not necessarily. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all their free will is involved heavily. Hmm. Some people who have chosen to go to the extreme of life experiences you know, in soul's plot, I would say it is my view, you know, personal view. Um, I cannot just uh, say it is a rule. It is no rule, but I'm saying those who got extreme experiences, they are uh, progressing path is also very fast because they accept changes quite quickly. In soul spiritual journey, you say, let us take one life, say so this uh, lifetime. Those who are neither do not that, no? It's okay, somehow managing, there is no such challenges in their life. They are fine, nice, happy and all. They, they are difficult to, you know, look for any spiritual path. But somebody who has undergone many tough situations in the life, any, in, even the injustices and, you know, life challenges and all, because they will be desperately looking for the answers and so then solutions. And finally, they landed up with spirituality. So for them, those not so good life experiences is instrumental to bring them in to the right path. So from soul's point of view, it worked in the favor of accelerating the process, the speed or the velocity. Okay. So this is the one aspect. So sometimes I, I call it that is a some kind of event happens in our life, which makes us to push towards the spirituality. Okay, you can say those are the triggering events for spirituality. If nothing could have happened, we would not have bothered to explore whether there is any other method available, not available, whether any question will not arise at all. Forget about getting answers to them. There's no question has been raised. It's okay. Gone. Life is gone. So this is also indirect purpose of to, you know, shake up the things. You call shake up the boat so the people can jump out. Okay. And try to learn swimming. But if boat sailing is fine, there's no boat has capsized on then nobody will learn swimming. Why? You know, everything is going fine. Nothing will happen. That's what they feel. Okay. So everything has a purpose. Soul also prepares us for that. So the people who have the more challenges, they are the more fast where they evolve, when they come in. Opposite thing also happens. I agree. Yeah, gloom and doom also somebody can choose and go downward spiral. That is also possible. They see the hopelessness in those things. 
So, but spiritual point of view, at Amar Jyoti Ji said that no problem will be given in your life at, without giving the power to solve it. Means you have to look for the power. You have to knock the door. You know, you have to find it out. Even the help, no? Suppose we wanted to help others, say. Hmm. Many people, we do help. You know, then slowly, slowly we, we see that at a certain level comes, some people, even if they help, they're not growing and they're not, uh, you know, further they're uh, not, it doesn't, you know, your help become ineffective. That is the time you have to choose not to help further. Because that person is need to understand, learn the lessons to figure it out themselves. And it also said, no, if you want to help somebody, don't give the fish. You teach how to fish. Okay. In spirituality, same thing. It will look like that person is facing so much of difficulty. Why he is not helping? I am talking the spiritual masters. Intentionally. It is not that they don't understand what is the problem. But that problem should not be spoon-fed because you will miss the experience. That's why you wait. The master say you ask, you facing when you face the problem, definitely you will face problem. Okay. Life is like that by design. I tell it is like a cricket, game of cricket. Now all ball will come at you. But if you till the time you think I can manage it, I can do it, that thing you play. But the moment you some hit the some ball is hit at the head and you say that you cannot do much and all those things, that is the time to be given. Uh, that help is also limited. You cannot take away the experience from somebody. We don't have any right. Okay. So we just give them aware, say that backup is available. You go forward. You don't sh feel shaky to move your legs. Yeah? Nobody can lift you, put it onto the top. No. You have to work up. Now, we can, when you fall back option, we give support. That is the right approach. Same here, in the soul's point of view also, the same thing is there. It will not stop you thing happening. Soul is always in witness mode, not interfering mode, not active mode, by design. So that you face yourself. When you ask for help, pray, and then we said, I don't know who my soul is. Then you learn. <laughs> then the spirituality start. Then you get the guidance. Then you get the power. Then you get everything. But you have to knock the door. It is your learning process, the life's journey and all, you know. And in between, a lot of things will happen. Many, you will come across many cheat thugs and why not. Everywhere, they are there. Yeah. So then you finally come to know, you will understand to know who is genuine, where I can get genuine guidance, genuine person, genuine channel and things like that. That is also to be figured it out. If some people get in the first time the best thing in the world, best method, best these things, I'm almost certain they will don't know the value of it and they will not opt for it. How to lead a, you know, prosperous, enlightened life hmm. have been already told, but those people, those not keen in learning, they will not learn, they will not follow, follow is a much, much far away thing. Hmm. Now, what does that mean? Means it is not that that uh, it will be uh, effect will be equal for everybody. It is only it will affect who are ready. Okay, they are ready. They yeah. have worked towards it, and that is what I am saying. Is figure it out. Level help is there everywhere, but you have to come to that level where you can be helped. I normally also give common example of cooking on a pan. All ingredients are correct, some of vegetable curry. All ingredients are correct, oil is there, put vegetables, half an hour, one hour gone, cooking is not happening. Okay, so what is the primary cause? Like I ask normally common question. So people say many things. Main thing is the pan is not heated enough. Maybe somebody forget to start the burner or even the burner has started, maybe it allow it to, you know, 10 minutes to warm up. It didn't, next minute they put the vegetable. All my many kinds of things. There's no fault of the oil or the the vegetable or thing like that. You know, neither the problem of the person who is cooking. Maybe they forget to open the flame. 
Okay, so this is called the readiness. That to warm up the pan to a certain level, that's what that is the the receiving ability of that person need to come up through out of free will. Otherwise, no knowledge will pass through. Hmm. Knowledge will come and go, but they will not get anything. And uh, like my Guruji Prem Nirmalji says, the way you hold the particular container, it matters. Yeah. If you hold it like that, it will you will get you collect all the divine graces showering like a rain. But if you hold it like that, you are still holding the bowl, but you cannot collect anything. So it is your free will, you have to rotate it and do it like that. Then only you will gain. Otherwise, it is look, everything is useless. Okay, so that is how it is. But again, I come back to my original point. We have to figure it out. We cannot depend it everything, and that is what our soul wants. All spiritual masters also don't don't come and interfere into your life lesson. But you learn experientially. That is the whole purpose of life to experientially learn. And when you need help, you offer the the guidance will be given only as and when it is asked, not automatically. So that is that is all the part of the figuring it out. Okay. All right, next. Guruji, uh, the next question is completely on a different note. Like when we say soul starts its journey as a mineral, so does it mean that all non-living things also have a soul? And if yes, um, for a living thing, it's easy to understand how a soul leaves a physical body and and the experience and goes to another body. But how does it happen in non-living things? Like Okay. See, the soul is an energy. Okay. The energy is everything within. What we call, call so-called life, mm. a living being. So, that is shown by the life symptoms and other things. But it doesn't mean who doesn't move, don't fall into that category of so-called live thing. They don't have a soul. Okay. They do. Because this is anything in the universe. They have a soul in it. If anything comes as a form, hmm, there are so many other things which is not in the physical form, but still anything you have the physical form does have a soul. Hmm. Like soul is the some, some kind of consciousness. You know, the part of the consciousness is there, then it expresses itself is that way. So in other words, the expressions of the different uh, are different, but the source is same. Our way of look, looking at the so life thing, which is like a growing and all those things and all, and which is uh, the life form, other forms, which is not growing, we said they're inanimate. Okay, animate, inanimate. But inanimate also, as it is, there is a sh some shape and form and all, their growth pattern is different because their time scale are some millions of years, much, much longer than you normal thing. So they have a different life path, you know, but that is also, but they are not animate, but they are life form because they came from the same consciousness. That is the way of understanding it. Hmm. Every entity in this, you know, universe, they have a soul. Okay, soul means the bundle of energy which has been, which is a source, their source and their, the subtler form of them. So, in that case, so to answer your particular question, even the, those who don't have a life, like they're inanimate, they do have a soul. Everything. Okay, they have a soul and uh, that, that's how it's being uh, played mm, into uh, they grow from there and then finally into come into the existence. Um, after evolving in the different life form they take and they come into the, the many way further into that one. You know, this, but answer is yes. It, it doesn't have the form or shape or all those things. It doesn't matter. You know, so in our uh, element, such a big uh, pool mass can have a one soul. And the same time, maybe one one molecule can have one soul, separate souls. That's possible. 
you know so that is in our level it is big and small but in the soul point of view it is not that it is just different expression of itself different representation of itself that's it okay so they do have all these inanimate objects also they do have a soul whatever you you see in the universe they have a soul okay yeah so what it then how does it decide like for example my computer that i'm using right now if that has a soul how does it decide to move on from this this lifetime to some different lifetime no, like, sorry what you saying which you are using uh, what is the that? laptop or the computer oh, laptop. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. the soul which is associated with it, how does it decide this progression from a laptop to some other thing? Yeah, for to understand what is happening to your the material used for your laptop, you have to come back after ten million years to see that. Okay, yeah. In our level, it is looks like a static. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll after maybe ten, twenty, thirty, forty years, we'll throw it in some place, right? And nature will reclaim it. Okay. No matter where you, what you will do, whether you put it into the, you know, on soil or ocean or whatever it is, or evaporate it into the air, whatever you do, the nature will reclaim it and make it into a different form in the different place. The energy will go somewhere else. We will not realize it because our time span is very limited. We cannot even think of the millions years perspective, but it will happen. Guaranteed, it will evolve. Now it is having one form like your laptop, but it will not be after fifty years. Okay, fifty years maybe still there is a chance. After two hundred years, definitely not. Okay, how much time it will take to go back to the earth? Maybe one thousand years. That's fine. In higher dimension, there is no time and space. It will be there, but ultimately it will go back to the earth from where it came. It came as a mineral. Ultimately, the earth will reclaim it back to the same form that it created in earth. See, I'm just giving some example, maybe interesting. Uh, so, I'm my area of specialization, oil and gas, but still engineering specialization is corrosion. Corrosion, you know, the rusting and all those things. What happens on the metal? The story is interesting. Yeah, means corrosion is a big problem. You know, into into the oil and gas industry and many other industries. Yeah, almost ninety percent of the problem related to the corrosion, like a, the rusting or metal loss, or, you know, something or happening somewhere. And you know, have to spend huge amount of money to paint them or repair them or do something about it, hmm. because we cannot allow some pipeline to leak or a offshore structure to fall down. We cannot. We cannot afford. We need to protect that particular thing, and that is our specialization. That's what we give professionally. How to? So to understand, many people ask question: Why this corrosion happens? Why? And happening somewhere, we don't know. Something is happening some inside a pipe or below a sea or you know something in the sky. Something is happening. Why it happens? Okay. See. What happens is when some everything is all mostly whatever we use, whether it's ship or pipeline or the offshore structure, you know, or a plant or a vessel or whatever it is, they are all made of steel. You know, there are other elements, but mostly they are made of steel. Steel comes into the nature uh, as a iron ore. Iron ore, then we have to first the exploration happens like. Many people, seismic survey geologists, are involved and say, "Okay, mining is is there." Then mining industry come, they dig up and then go to there and bring the ore. There is a mining industry. Then there is a something called metallurgical industry is involved to purify that and make it a proper thing, mm, like make it a proper steel, put some alloy into that, some material into it. I'm just explaining roughly how it is process. Yeah. Then they give it to the manufacturing steel plants. They make it a roll plate and all those kind of things, yeah, the, the plants. And after that, they give it to the. Suppose it is a pipeline, okay? They give it to the pipeline industry, so they roll it and weld it and make a pipe. Then after that, those pipe have been shipped 
to the plates. So transportation industry is involved to ship those pipes to wherever it is. Finally, maybe some middle of the desert, the pipeline need to be laid. So then the, again, the construction industry is involved. We call it EPC, you know, engineering, uh, you know, um, procurement and construction. So they contractor, they dig up and put the pipes and weld them. Yeah. Then say, if it is completed, our job is complete, project complete. Then we start putting oil or gas through it. Okay. Then the operation, oil and gas companies like us, you know, we come and run it. Okay. What we do, then maybe we give it that particular gas to a power plant. Okay. With that gas, they generate electricity. That, so the power industry is involved. Oil and gas industry, then power industry is involved. And then through that electricity, it is distributed everybody's house. The electrical industry, the distribution industry, power distribution industry is involved. Then how we get the electricity? And then this bulbs are running and this air condition is running and that's the whole chain. Okay. Now the thing is, if that pipeline from where the gas is flowing to the power plant, if that leaked tomorrow, then we have to stop the gas. Power plant will be stopped, shut down and people will be in darkness. We cannot allow this to happen. Even a one millimeter hole, the pipeline maybe is 10 millimeter thick or maybe 15 millimeter thick. Even a one millimeter hole of a 15 mm thick pipe is good enough to stop the whole thing. The weakest part of the chain is the strength of the chain. See, we cannot allow some metal loss, some corrosion to happen of 10 millimeter by one millimeter. One by one, that means this, that create a hole enough to stop it. Yeah. We cannot even that few milligrams of steel to go because of any reason. So there, that is why we put our engineering to do it. So in this respect, let us go back to our original question that why it is happening. Why that pipeline will particularly corrode? Why it will, some steel will disappear from there? The question is, you see why I explain that to give, make it a point. Let me tell what is the point. You see, so many industries are involved to make the electric supply to happen in our home. So many industries are, um, uh, you know, included one by another. Every industry deploy their resources, their manpower, their expertise. You know, they put a lot of investment done to, you know, to buy the equipment, run the equipment, operators, and then engineers, and this, that. Everywhere they have to put money so that the things can go on and on and on. All we did, that pipeline of make of steel we made, that is to serve the humanity, you know, so that we can send the electric. There's one example. There are plenty of different things we do. But the thing is, given an opportunity, it all is made to get up, up to the say, pipeline. A lot of money has been spent. A lot of investment has been spent for to, to gas the flow. But nature does not like that. Is a we human being. We manipulated the system, manipulated these things in the name of engineering or something to make it as a pipe. But what is its original form, the natural form? There is iron ore, ferric oxide or ferrous oxide, somewhere in the middle, maybe, you know, 500 meters below the ground, if more. Okay. So, given a chance, nature will reclaim it back to its original form, which is ore. This process of reclaiming is corrosion. That will automatically happen. Because nature doesn't want to keep it in the altered form, which is a carbon steel, which is pipeline is made of. Given a chance, we we'll apply coating and do many other techniques to protect it. You know. So what is our role then? If it leaks tomorrow, then all power supply will be off for the whole city. Okay. There are many pipelines on one pipeline, whole city is dependent. Okay. So we cannot allow it to happen. So that is our role so that we, we don't allow it to happen. But when we do that, we also understand we cannot do it forever. Given a chance, it will reclaim it back. So that's why we call it a life of an asset. 
we only we know ultimately nature will take it but that pipeline little it is designed for say 40 years let it survive for little more maybe 50 60 70 years maybe with our effort it will go up to 100 years but afterwards it will deteriorate we all know after 1000 years that pipeline will not exist at all earth will reclaim it completely it will be corroding but only thing is till that time that at least 100 years it should give its intended service and that's all financially we call it right of period means after that there is no point in running it, it is better to leave it like that hmm. it will ultimately reclaim it hmm. so same thing is the soul's point of view eventually it will go back to its natural original point but only you have to make sure the useful life of that asset is maintained same with all the souls on the even the non living and all those things they are also like that okay only that part useful service life only that is to offer before and after nature will take care it will happen for sure why it will go its natural state and the reverse process so many money and energy has been spent so many people are involved into bringing it to that point but reverse process is free nothing need to be done it is naturally happening so all our effort is to delay it as much as possible okay that's how it that's how the nature works okay so that's why given one live example of what we do and it is directly related to the you know job we are doing in this industry okay just to give you some information for understanding purposes okay. yeah but the enlightenment happens mm -hmm. only in the human form like no oh, yes. other form. okay mm -hmm. yeah okay. for you let me explain this see uh, enlightened soul cannot get enlightened okay only the you need a human body to realize self realization for the self realization you need to have the physical body at soul level, enlightenment is not possible because enlightenment is a connection with your own soul. Hmm. To establish connection with your own soul and so whatever you have been experiences, that is merged with the source. But at the soul level is not possible. So you have to incarnate and have those kind of sense, all these five senses and the physical body to go beyond that. You need to learn how to go beyond that. In absence of that, you will not learn. Okay, so that is that is enlightenment and that is what you need a physical body, you know, and soul level enlightenment is not possible. If that is the case, then just by dying, you could, could have been get enlightened. No? And that is no such thing called enlightened uh, meant happened in the soul level. No, no such thing. There can be some enlightened souls because that enlightened souls are already taken birth and have the experience in the physical body, then they become enlightened souls. Yes. Okay. Um, so yes. How does the soul, like we live different uh, lifetimes, like we have a plant lifetime, then animal lifetime. So how does the soul decide when to shift from one to the other? Okay. There are two answers of it. Uh, first answer is soul's plan. Soul can choose. Like we have a daily plan, what I do in the morning, what we eat in the breakfast, what we do after breakfast and when we'll be going out, when office and then lunch and when post lunch meeting and then coming back home, then you know, take out, take out family and the dinner and things like that. So like that soul has a plan of the different, different part, different, different things. You know, that is one way. Second part is because of the karmic thing, each and every having some karmic account. So soul need to create an environment to have that karmic account settled. Hmm. So to have that, it starts all the experience start human being as a last form before enlightenment, before return journey. So each every dimension it wants to experience. Okay. Like uh, dimension means when there's a mineral, that is a zero dimension because it, you don't see it's a growth. No, there is no way of it is growing or something like that. So they say the dimension is zero. So then it is, you have a plant like a tree, like a only one, you know, instead of one single point, which is zero dimension, it goes, it can grow vertically, grow root and thing. So you can say that is single dimension. So then comes uh, this uh, something called animal, 
you know, animal can grow length, width, and breadth, and it can move around. Okay, so there are two dimensions. It can move vertically and horizontally. Both it can move around. Yeah, but it has got some limited scope. How much it can it can move around? That um, the human being comes where it is going. So the first, second, then the third dimension it comes that uh, yeah, where it can uh, uh, sorry growth wise it can have the growth the multiple growth both length width it can grow. And then the third uh, category is length width, and it can relocate itself, which is the some form of animal, different different places. That is the fourth, uh, third one. Fourth one, they are the human being. They can plan something ahead, and they have a sense of time, which is a so-called fourth dimension. It comes into their play. They can they can plan the first part of their life, second part of the life, and a life plan, and the, the time element comes into that for the human being. Animals they don't have that. Okay, this time part they cannot schedule their life. They cannot say I will go for my graduation ceremony and after that I will join a job. They don't plan it. They cannot. They don't have that capacity. They have to survive what they have given. Okay, they don't have those kind of choices. But anyway, so that is a human being. So that journey when it is over, the fifth dimension is a consciousness. Okay. So through your physical body, like all this, even the time, you have to go beyond time. Consciousness is beyond time. So that is the fifth dimensional. That is called spiritual awakening. When you go and experience timelessness, the time and space, you just you don't need all other dimensions. When you experience fourth, go to fifth, which is a dimensionless. Hence, dimension, lower dimensionless. There is no such thing, time and space there. So that is the evolution path. So all of us, we are undergoing, you know, this process, and ultimately we go to the higher, higher dimension. That is our evolution on the planet Earth. That's what we choose from the zero to up to fifth, and that is the last. There is nothing on the planet Earth beyond fifth. So then we get evolved and leave that Earth plane. No need to come back after that. When you experientially understand, learn, grow to that each and every aspect, step by step. Different type dimensional experiences, and that is that's how it ends. Yeah. So it's just that once the soul just decides that I am done with the animal lifetime, now I have to move to human life. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. But it is not really; it is not that straightforward. Sometimes it can back and forth a little bit. Hmm. Sometimes go to little animal, then come back another plant is possible. Okay. Means it is not one after another, but normally it is like that because the dimensionally they are less. Hmm. Or let me put it in this way: if you go in the higher dimensional, grow into higher dimension, you can choose to come back into the lower dimension for some lifetime and again go back. It's possible, but somebody has not grown to that level; they cannot jump the you know the dimensional scale. They have to undergo step by step. Okay. Yeah, and my last question was: Is extraterrestrial also true? Like, does can a soul decide to take part in some other planet? Mm, yeah, this is a very good question. It's a big topic. <laughs> Extraterrestrials. Um, see, there are two things. Yeah, here. Something is called star seed. Means. All of us is certain amount of star seeds somewhere in the galaxy. We came first, entered there. Hmm. So then we start getting evolved into this this planet and grow and souls growth and all those things. Yeah. So that's how it plays out. But some of the extraterrestrial beings are evolved beings. Means they are operating much higher level. I'm talking fifth dimension. There are other dimension, maybe six, seven, ninth dimension or twelfth dimension. More pure, more subtle, more this kind of things. Yeah. So, if some of they have already evolved to that level, hmm, so they are already operating from that level of consciousness. Hmm. So they can come and visit us. Like you, you know, even though it's not a very good example, like we also go visit zoo, no? in the to see the animals, because they are lower in the consciousness. We are interested to know how they live. 
or we go into so maybe some forest maybe you are interested in panda hmm, chinese panda so we wanted to see what they eat bamboo how they how their houses are how they live and all is interesting for us uh, same here so they visit us to see how we are evolving they are already much much evolved you know we call extraterrestrial they have a capacity to visit us in a certain vibration certain wavelength but we cannot see we can hear and think we cannot capture them because they are operating in a different wavelength but they can see us we cannot okay that's quite possible that they do you know the visit on the conscious higher level of more higher level of consciousness some of the conscious even we cannot imagine we don't have the tool to imagine what kind of thing aspects they are yeah. spiritual masters they can feel what kind of that energy would have been okay but as a clear idea no not necessarily or some of the things time they communicate with few types of individuals human beings they are possible there are cases those are all there so when the question is it is there or not yes it is there but whether they we are the extraterrestrial to live another planet may not be okay there may be some category they live in another planet there may be something they make another dimension there is no such thing called planet okay they are just in a different vibrational reality for them and they have a capacity to change the dimension to come and visit us like we go and visit a certain place zoo or jung jungle maybe as i give an example of panda maybe i have to visit some forest in china to see some panda okay how they live and uh, it is entertaining for us just we are more we are curious how they live like that so they came and see us and uh, do that and sometimes they help us to do something because they are higher level of consciousness hmm. like uh, uh, teaching some child a b c d you see they are doing mistakes and all those things but still you are you know what will be the next step no need to uh, give them uh, story telling of shakespeare not needed okay they will not understand so let them grow as per their own way and, but you are aware about those things yes so is it also possible to reach that level or that is a different space altogether no that's what it again we need to go into the I, uh, as i told you in the beginning is a big vast subject it okay. depends okay mm. if it is in your life path to be an et and some point of time in the in a far far less future possible mm -hmm. okay but you have to go through no because all you know all we came from the same source our path plans are different so we need not to need not to go through all the things available in the universe once we have chosen the art plan after that enlightenment that chapter is over on the spiritual journey go to moksha you know baba ji is there or moksha guru matter ends there but whether we we can choose to be it depends if it is there on the life path we may choose to go into other dimensions also before leaving it is more evolved and operating from this pure love and you know they they exchange they ex just interestingly money is there only in this physical you know on art plan there is no other dimension there is something called money okay all higher dimension the way of transaction is love and gratitude somebody has done favor to you you express gratitude and the love that's it that's the way you pay in the in higher dimension anyway so this is the different uh, thing and uh, so that so called et and all that's why even they they appear they will they will not seem to you because they are in a different vibrational reality you're not in your vibrational range okay that is possible and that's how they are yeah thank you so much those were my questions okay thank you okay all right okay. god bless you Now, floor is open for any question. Any of you may have. Okay, Indranilda. Yes. Uh, good evening. I mm -hmm. had two questions. Mm -hmm. The first question is uh, digging a bit deeper into Shraddhanjali's thing on Hitler. Mm -hmm. Now, Hitler was a messenger of doom. 
correct? So, mm-hmm. if he was a messenger of doom, he would have been sent by the universe, mm-hmm. correct? So, if he was sent by the universe and what he did or did not do for humanity, mm-hmm. is that card for him? Uh, since sorry, he was nom- yeah. since he was nominated and he did not do it on his own, is it karmic account for Hitler? Uh, no, he was not nominated. Okay, whether mm. he was created by the Creator, answer is yes. Okay, mm. but whatever the actions he has chosen, it is assigned to him. No, that come from free will at the soul level. Mm-hmm. Okay, he has chosen to act, means to take a life in this form because he has a soul free will agreement with the Creator. Correct. How he will play out, it is up to free will of his soul level. Of course, when he play that kind of role, repercussions come with it is as a package. Basically, the soul agreed to accept both. Okay. Okay, so that is about the uh, answer you know, direct answer to your, that question. Yes. Okay. Second question is, uh, there is a saying, we are what we eat, right? Mm -hmm. We are what we eat. And there's also a concept of the uh, ecosystem. You have the food chain, right? From the food chain, you have the plants, you have the herbivores, you have the carnivores and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So does that mean there is this, I don't know how to put this question. Does that mean there is a single unified Soul uniting all these stages. Oh yes, it came from the same source, but in a different form. There are different level of uh, awareness process. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's awareness that makes it a higher life form and the lower life form. Right. Just they are aware, and as you mentioned, the food chain. Uh, let me put it in this way: uh, a higher life form. When they get killed or, you know, uh, harmed, you know, so-called the pain and everything is much, much higher because they are operating through, like in human being, it is highest Uh because they have so many systems, they can feel each and everything like a nervous system. Uh Okay. But if you, so a human being is killed is having a huge amount of pain created. I'm saying that. The negative energy. Okay. Correct. But that is not the same for animals. Okay. It is a little less. Because their nervous system is not meant to feel that kind of level of sensitivity. Uh So killing an animal, killing a human being, there is a difference of sensitivity. Because it is not felt in the same way. Right. Okay. If Uh you go down further to plant... Right. Plant has a life, but no nervous system. So okay. plant cannot feel that pain. Right. Yeah. Some some branch of the plant is chopped off. You oh. see another thing is growing from there, which is not possible in human being or animals. Correct. Okay. So if you say chopping off one, you know, say head, uh, head is a, it will die. One hand of human being, one animal, and one branch of a plant is hugely different. Right. The effect point of view, the pain point of view, it's different. Okay. Wow. And if you further go down to the mineral, that is completely absent. Even that form is absent. Oh. So making and breaking is just reforming it. That's all. There's no pain involved there. Okay. okay. This is the understanding of the food choices and I'll make. So uh, uh, normally you have to go, which is the least harmful. I was explaining earlier also on food chain habits that we have to go oh. or no, not food chain. We are talking about the mosquito and other things, but logic is same. You know, you have to go. What are the options available? Go to the least. So in that sense, if to, for me to survive, we have to drill a hole in the mountain. Mm. it will not create a pain in the mountain. Correct. Yeah. But I cannot put some dead body of people and make a home out of that. So that is definitely harmful. Yeah. Mm. Harmful, painful and all karmic thing will come in addition to that. Okay. Okay. This is the you know understanding wise, this is a difference. 
So uh, technically, it is possible for an animate object mm. to become an inanimate object in a next life. Is that possible? Possible. It's soul's choice. See, let me give you uh, again another example. Coming from higher life form to lower life form is possible. Okay. By choice. But opposite is not true. Mm -hmm. Mineral cannot, it's not possible because it's going to the higher level. Right. We earlier discussing about the ET. Some ET or, you know, like evolved being mm. choose to bar, uh, take birth as a human being. It's possible. Okay. Right. But in uh, somebody who has not completed the journey on planet Earth up to level of fifth dimensional consciousness, they cannot choose to be ET in next life because this is a much, much higher evolved stage. Okay. Don't have the choice. Okay. Okay. This we understand okay. in that way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Okay. Next is uh, okay. Dipanita. Pranam Raj Dipanka. Yeah, Pranam Dipanita. My question is: um, If somebody only does good deeds and is um, their soul let's say, has in this lifetime not experienced um, harming someone or doing things which would have uh, created negative karma, mm -hmm. is, it, uh, is it that the soul can choose uh, that because at the soul level there is no good or bad, mm -hmm. is it that to balance that um, kind of karmic account, they will choose that their next life will have uh, experiences that can create those negative karmas or can they choose to, you know, stop taking birth again? I guess it depends on the soul's plan, but I'm just yes. wondering what happens if they only do good deeds? Is that also an imbalance in karmic account? Um, okay, answer is yes and no both together. I'm saying you why yes, yeah? If you have done a lot of good karma, you have a credit, like a bank balance. You have a balance. Yeah. You can choose whether you would like to spend it or not to spend it. If somebody did harm to you, forgive, you don't want. So whether you have to go into the negative life, no. But you have a power of choice here because you have a credit. But you have done the other way. You have negative karma. You think I will not take the next life, you know, everything I will settle in this life, that may not be possible. You have don't you don't have a right to choose. You don't have credit. Like your bank balance is zero. You cannot use a credit, I mean a debit card to withdraw some money from there. Not possible. Okay, but if you have a money, you don't want to use it, you have to donate it, it's your choice. Okay, so therefore, if you follow the good karma, you have to come back for negative? No. But you will have a choice. If you like to, you can. Okay, otherwise, you just say, matter over, I don't want any further experimentation with life. Uh, no, no need. You have a choice. So that good karma will give you the choice. Bad karma will not give you the choice. Okay, that is the main difference between these two. Okay. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Okay. So now, Moa, you raised your hand earlier. Is it there something still or already answered? Now, basically, I wanted to um, ask based on the last question on ET. So the mm. other day also you mentioned multiverse. Right. And mm. so the question I had was more around, uh, I mean, I know that's a dimension which is not visible in our common eyes or whatever oh. understanding. Mm. But I mean, it's uh, how, how do you really believe it? Like in the sense, uh, do they come, do these uh, subtle or, you know, higher souls, do they have the power to come and uh, take a human form? Is that something or 
the fact that they are observing, they come to see us. I mean, how is this believable or how do we get to know about it? Uh, maybe okay. we may not know, but... <laughs> No, I understood. I'll give you just an analogy to understand how we know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, first thing is to just directly answer your question. We have a capacity to connect them and we will know it. Okay. We can establish connection. It's our interest to connect and they will come and we'll interact. We know that they exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but that is your answer. But let me give some other aspect because this is not a very straightforward issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to understand that, that still, how do you know they exist? Communication will come later, but how do you know they exist? Fundamental mm -hmm. question. Yeah. If, if I know, convinced that they exist, then only I will do for further, no? try to find them out, try to communicate, try to get more information and things like that. For that, my advice is, you know, there is something, uh, some place is called Antarctica. Okay. How do you know? that Antarctica exists? Uh, I'm just asking. Of course, it's human, uh, uh, human, what do you call it, uh, definition of our map or the world, or you know, based on that. Yeah. Limited so somebody by human mind. Yeah. Somebody created it. Yeah, discovered it. So when you, they, ever visited there, you really don't know, you don't have any first-hand experience that piece of land exists. Right. You have not seen it. Your your five senses doesn't capture them. Mm -hmm. Never visited, never experienced that. Correct? In your five senses. Okay. But still you believe there is a place called Antarctica. Correct? Because somebody else has visited. They have recorded something. They have put it into geography books. They have put it into the different videos or you know any information. They have written books on that. So via media, you are convinced that some place is called Antarctica and they do exist. Right? But you don't have anything. In your five senses, your, even your intellect, you have not experienced that. No direct first-hand experience. But only somebody else's version, you accepted that as a, this must be correct because they are saying, they are giving evidences, something like that. So far as ET is concerned, it is same thing for you. You have to accept the people who communicated with them, who explained about their interactions, even though you don't have the direct first-hand experience of communicating with them and understanding them or knowing them. Same thing. You have to, that is your starting point. Then, like right. Antarctica, you may choose to explore it by yourself. You don't believe your experience may be completely different than what other people has told. Quite possible. Then it will be a direct experience. Same with the IT. Okay. When you communicate directly, get first hand experience, then you know who actually IT is. In okay. fact, just, just to add to that, uh, like there was mm -hmm. when we were ch children and we studied in school, like Rama and Mahabharata, all of this was like epic. So it was more like mm -hmm. a story. But now... Mythology. Yes. Mythology, yeah. yes. Epic Myth. mythology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, whatever, again, based on media, what people are discovering, Gwarka here, this, that, new, new, uh, you know, discoveries. And it's coming that uh, Krishna was actually there, Ram was actually there. So it's changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of those belief systems are, uh, you know, Changing. Yeah. Okay, but you need to get your first hand experience. Then it will be your truth. Rest of all, all are versions. Okay, yes, there are multiple versions of all the characters in the epics or mythology. Yeah, they are there. Whether they truly exist or not, unless until you have the first direct first hand experience, it is not a truth for you, it is a version of somebody else. Okay, so that is, I leave it there, but that is, that is what the reality is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Vani, go ahead. Guruji, uh, I have, the question is, um, do we make conscious decisions, um, better conscious decisions if we trust God or like, say, okay, Guru Mandala is doing guiding me in this way. So, 
Um, how much of uh, the trust and the conscious decision um, mm. are like related? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, um, whether God is not there or that, it is a different question. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it depends upon, uh, just like uh, Deepak Chopra says, God means God of our understanding. Mm -hmm. It may not be the truth. Just we are, the way we understand. You know, there are different mm -hmm. level of gods in that sense. Anyway, <clears throat> so far as your question is about whether we need to... Uh, let somebody else to drive our life and think like that. So that is from where this is coming and whether it is what thing to do and think like that. From that, let me tell you the, the truth. The bare truth is so-called the creator or I call it universal consciousness is not bothered about whether you believe it or don't believe it. Okay. It doesn't matter. Neither it is expecting something from you, nor rejecting anything from you. For our own, this part you listen carefully, for our own evolution, we need to surrender it to something, we call it a higher power or somebody, something beyond our physical existence. For us to grow, to help, to get that kind of help. From other side, nobody wants that. And they want to say, you pray for me, no. Nothing. They don't expect anything from you. So now for us to on our journey, we discover that it is physically, practically impossible to know everything. Even though we living in an age of information technology, but all information is not available. 99% informations are junk because they are heavily manipulated and distorted and things like that. So we are exposed to a lot of junk in the name of information. Okay. So that's why any decision we make based on those junk will be junk. And that decision will create a junk in my life. So it is all about searching for the purity and searching for the truth. In search of the truth, not depending on anything outside you, direct first hand. Hmm. That is our spiritual journey, to understand the truth, the direct first hand connection with our own higher self, because it knows everything. In the process, what when we establish the connection, we surrender our free will. That has to be surrendered using our free will. For our own soul consciousness, not anybody, not God, forget about God, our own soul consciousness. That's good enough. Soul has Our soul has connection to everything, even universal consciousness. So if we can go up to that and surrender to our own higher self, okay, then what will happen? Our soul knows everything. I don't know. My lower self doesn't know. Higher self knows. So it makes sense to surrender everything, put my higher self into the driver's seat, and I am in the passenger seat. Let my higher self drive the car. I know it will take me to the right destination shortest possible time. It knows the route. You know where it is. I am going there for the first time. Okay, that is called surrender. So you are basically surrendering it to your own higher self. God does not come into the picture. Okay, unnecessarily bring God into it and then we, somebody else has got, I was telling God of my understanding, somebody else's understanding, then we compare your God, my God. Okay. Oh, their God, they are calling, the God is calling, called Jihad. And my God doesn't, then all nonsense. Okay. This complete misunderstanding of everything. No need anything. You just connect to your, your own higher self. So that is called your holistic living is you are completely surrendered yourself to the soul who knows everything. And soul is custom made for you. It knows everything. Your past, past life, your future plan, your individual problem you are facing. Forget about country's problem. Country has a lot of people to take care. Or your company's problem. There are a lot of people are paid to take care of the company's problem in the future. Hmm. But you have to run your life, your family, your responsibilities. So for that, you surrender to your own higher self. Then that obtain guidance from your own higher self and run your life. That is called holistic living. If you do that, then no karma will come into the picture because your soul knows everything, which will create karma and which will not. 
So you you run your life zero karma, all these things completely under guidance. That is a surrendered life, but that surrender is not actually to the God. It is to your higher self, and that is the purpose to just live a holistic life, zero karma life. And which is fully aligned with your soul consciousness, so there is no question that you know after death you will be given punishment or the reward. There is no need because you live the life in full alignment with your soul consciousness, and that's it. The purpose of life is achieved. Okay, you already got whatever you came here in the earth for the planet Earth. Okay, yes. Guruji, I am sorry to ask no again. I am not connected to my higher self yet. So how do I like? Um, how do I just like? Uh, do I leave everything? Um, to whom? Like a kind of like Guru Mandala or something like? Yeah, uh, so what see, What would be the easier way to for me to? Yeah, yeah. Easier way is to follow your own Guru. Okay. okay. <laughs> guru calls and you guide. You know. Just ask and get the guidance, and you just follow it. That's how to get. Oh, whether you have to know, you have a right to trial and experiment different things. That's there, but that is a shortcut. That is answer to your direct question. But let me tell you one thing: your external guru's role is to show you how you can get connected to your own soul, which is called inner guru. Mm -hmm. The moment the connection is established with your inner guru, the external guru's job is over. Then inner guru takes over. Mm -hmm. Till that time, obviously, you don't know the destination and how to do it or the techniques to do it. But your spiritual guide or guru knows how that person knows because he has she the walked the path before. That's why he knows. Like any place you visited earlier, you know how to go there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, which path to take or which flight to take, you know how to go there. So they just tell you we go the, the, this way. Is that is the only way? No, there are multiple ways. Then why to follow that person? Because if at least he can confirm that particular path what he followed, is definitely take you there. <laughs> That's what it is makes sense to follow and then to reach there. And after that, you take on its own journey based on your own soul's plan. Okay, that is the right approach. Thank you, Guruji. Okay, God bless you. Yes, Manali. Ah, uh, yes, Guruji. My question is more or less on the second. Uh, the, I mean, like the second question asked by Bani, like that uh, our soul is having a non-interfering approach. So, mm -hmm. how would I know that whatever I am doing, uh, it's guided by my soul? Like okay. Mm -hmm. That no, no, will mm -hmm. no, come one by one. Yeah, let me ask the second question. I'll come later. Let me answer this first. See, um, your your soul is a custom made guide for you. You know, it's like while driving, it is your phone with GPS. Yes. Um, Jaggi Vasudev, you know, Sadhguru says that the GPS is guru positioning system. You know, guru can guide you, you know, all these things. Anyway, so from that, how do you know? You need not to know everything about the soul. You just need the answer to what immediately you are facing. Through meditation, you connect and get the answer and that's it. Okay, that is possible. Hmm. I was earlier, you know, explaining to Mohuana that you need not to believe in everything. But at least, if you get to do something that there is something called higher power and they know everything, and I need to, you know, get guidance from them. If you attempt only, then you will get it. If you don't ask, you will never get it because soul also respect your free will. It will not give any unsolicited advice or you know suggestion or guidance if you don't ask. So, what our method through meditation and all? It's just a way to ask my own soul, please guide me. Every day during six step meditation, we go to the six step and we say, "Na, that now you take up you with your higher self." So, before that, it's all preparation to go to that level, expanded awareness, and then it will be you will get guided. But your question is, how do I know whatever guidance I am getting? It's not that you need not to know. You just have to follow. 
Okay, because this your own soul consciousness is always it is for your best interest. Whatever intuitivity will get the message, you have to simply follow that. If you again asking questions, then your ego enters in. Okay. Your enter your ego questions that perfectness of the message you get. But if you take the ego aside, just follow whatever intuitively you are getting, your life will be fine. Um, another question is, Guruji, it's not that the message I will get always in the time of when I'm meditating. Like I'm telling when I will meet you in Kolkata, I will tell you personally. Like uh, last, uh, last to last session when I was attending your session, um, something happened and you were discussing about this program and all that. And some message came to me which I know that it's not my ego mind. Okay. So, no, uh, no, that, yeah. Before you go further, in this kind of messages, send separately. Okay. Okay. I thought yeah. I will share it with you personally when I will meet Correct. you in Kolkata. Yeah. So that you have also, yes, but otherwise you can send, I can confirm whether it is a mind game or okay. truly spiritual experience. Okay, I will then I will share it. Yeah, so no need to discuss it here. You send me okay. one to one, whether a meeting but or it message. It can happen now. Besides meditation, also this type of message can come. Oh, yes, all the time. Message comes all the time. Only thing we have, uh, we didn't grow to that level that we understand all the message. It is happening all the time. It's called intuitive voice. All the time it is happening. Even now it is happening, but only thing is we have we cannot just make it out and you know segregate it from chattering mind. That is the only issue. Okay. Okay. So just share. I, I will confirm whether it is if it is mind game. I say ignore it. Yes. But if yes. it is truly happening, I will tell. No, it is this thing. Yes, Guruji. Okay. okay Guruji. Thank you. Thank All you very much. God bless you. Okay, Dipanita, go ahead. Pranam, I have one more question. Yes, yes, go ahead. It's related to the previous question, actually. Um, so when we are in a meditative state, we are uh, kind of, there is a, um, there is an expansive feeling. There is a kind of um, a feeling of presence in that now moment where you are yeah. not thinking about the past or the future. So there is mm -hmm. no thought per se. Right. But when we are in our day-to-day um, life when we are going about like our duties and things like that. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that it, in order for us to do our duty, we need to make use of our uh, previous experiences or some planning for the future? So mm -hmm. I guess we are not exactly like in the present moment when we are doing our duties and day-to-day -day life. So mm -hmm. is it also possible to be connected even when we are not in the present moment or when we are functioning in day-to-day -day lives is, is I, I think you kind of touched on that in the previous answer it's just no no very good very good question it's a fundamental question very good see your question if your question is whether doing external work can i get connected or it is either or answer is both can be possible simultaneously we practice multi-point awareness one stage okay Exactly, because that's how soul operates. It can take care of multiple things, 10 different things at the one go. Equally, competently, with without any, you know, you know, like a slip in any one of the aspects. It's possible. Mind has an issue of only one thing at a time. Mind cannot take two things at a time. In fact, we use this limitation of mind to go beyond mind. If we are aware of everything around us, simultaneously mind drops because it is beyond capacity of the mind. So you can do whatever you are doing with full concentration, no issues. At the same time, it is possible for you to be aware if you are operating from the consciousness level. So answer is yes, all the spiritual masters, they live like life like that. It is not running away from the duties or the work or responsibilities or study or going to school, colleges, job. It is not that. They will do. But at the same time, internally connected. 
externally performing their duties, whatever they need to do. Okay, there is no contradiction at all. Next practical issue, what normally I face that I have not come to the level of that kind of stage where, you know, I can do both together. Internal, external, I cannot do both together. Means it is okay. Means it is means you still didn't get completely able to kick out the mind. Mind is still playing. That's why one at a, more than one at a time, it is not possible. Hmm. Right now, yet. Okay. How to develop that ability, whether I will be able to do both together, how to do that. Every day job, I am not talking during meditation. Meditation is expanded awareness and all you mentioned, that's correct. During day to day life, I have got just one tip. Okay, what is that tip? Practical tip, just be aware of your breath. It is all about the awareness. I am just doing some work with certain level of awareness, my mind is involved there. But in the background, my consciousness can operate. It is anyway operating. Just I am aware of it now. That is the only difference. That I have to hold that awareness. Just be aware of your breath. We are breathing all the time. Okay. Suppose you are doing something. Hmm. Some work. Hmm. So you are, maybe you are writing something on your laptop. At the same time, be aware of your breath. That will connect you to the consciousness. It will play in the background. Anyway, it is playing, but this time it will be interconnected. You will be aware of it. Okay, that is the tip I have. If, if you can follow the tip, you will get connected all the time. All the spiritual masters, they do. Okay. They do it and also, if you can, it takes little practice. Three is to do. Stomach breathing all the time, 24-7. Yeah. Then you will never lose it. That is a key to hold the awareness. Okay. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Okay. So, this was a very good tip. Thank you. Uh, this. Uh, okay. uh, bless you. Yeah. yeah. So there are every everywhere there are tips. All the masters they can give you the tips because they have undergone these issues. Huh? But it is uh, we have to wait till the question comes where query comes then only the answer will come you know because this is not normal part of the curriculum okay if you face the problem only the solution makes sense otherwise what is the solution what is the difference between this and that you know so anyway so that is the that is the way normally it is done and that is where the masters are to practical and the babaji said masters are different level and different social structure Things like that, so that they can convey message well, you know, because that's how the people will understand. So that that is the fundamental reason for this. Okay, all right. So let us call it a day. We'll just conclude our session today with home chanting and shanti part. Oh.